I want to discuss the solution to this question uh, from the Society of Actuaries exam P sample questions. <clears throat> Once again, uh, in my opinion, the explanation is not quite thorough. Just my opinion. Um, this question actually <clears throat> was requested by uh, somebody, Rayon Lewis. Mr. Rayon Lewis, thank you for requesting a topic for me to cover. I appreciate that. Um, for anyone interested in me covering something, please leave me a comment. I'm happy to do so. All right. <clears throat> this is the setup. And uh, I actually didn't quite want this here in red yet, but it's there. So um, my random variable y is the number of patients with advanced, advanced stage cancer um, out of six. <clears throat> okay, we have a, a population. <clears throat> and we're choosing a random sample of six. Okay. Uh, and we want to say something about it. Uh, X is the number of patients with early stage cancer out of six. And we also had, we could also um, define another random variable, we could call it whatever we want, N, the, the patients without any cancer whatsoever. So here are the um, corresponding probabilities here. Um, I have some events, A, E, and N. This is just a probability that an individual has advanced stage cancer. Probability an individual has an early stage cancer and probability no cancer, right? So uh, right here, I have um, a remark which, in my opinion, <coughs> would have been valuable if the SOA had written this. I'm saying here that Y is distributed with the binomial distribution um, where N is 6, the number of uh, trials we're running, and P is 0.1. First thing you should say to yourself is, can I do this? Well, under what conditions can I state something is binomial? The most common mistake that you need to watch out for <clears throat> that is necessary for uh, the claim that a distribution is binomial is independent trials. <clears throat> so the question you have to ask yourself is, are the trials independent? If I'm drawing these individuals, okay, and testing to see whether they have cancer or no cancer, um, and uh, what kind of cancer they have if they have it, right? Um, are those going to be independent trials? Well, yes. Why? Think about this for a second. If I pull an individual and I test them, see if they have cancer or not, that's going to have no bearing, no effect on whether the next person has cancer. I mean, people are, are, are individuals themselves and one person to the next, it's not going to matter whether the previous person has cancer or not. So the trials are independent. We absolutely need that. So <clears throat> Y is binomial. X is binomial as well different probability, different P, but it is. So let's, before I even uh, write that down now, let's write down what it is we're looking for. We're looking for a conditional expectation. So we're looking for uh, the expected value, the expected number of individuals out of six that have advanced stage, advanced stage cancer given uh, that the number of individuals with early stage cancer is at least one. So this is what we're looking for. And, um, <clears throat> Of course, you would first initially try to answer this question directly. In other words, you would try to use the definition of, ex of conditional expectation. Now, in order to do that, though, you would have to look at, okay, you would have to consider, you'd have to consider, um, well, we're looking at discrete distributions, we'd have to look at the probability uh, that y, probability of y given x uh, greater than or equal to 1. You'd have to somehow compute these values. And if you go through this, I mean, you go ahead and try a Bayes formula or just a definition, this gets complicated fast. You can even start going through these individual cases and it's confusing. It's confusing. So this is the motivation as to why we're not gonna take this approach. <clears throat> if someone has a way of doing this, I'm more than happy to see that. Okay, but I haven't come up with a way yet. So uh, I'm gonna go with the idea that the SOA uh, proposes uh, but hopefully you'll, my explanation to you will make a little more sense on what they're doing, okay? So this is difficult, okay? Um, difficult to find. So we're going to look at uh, a mixture, okay? Um, this is absolutely something you need to know how to do on the exam P. Okay, so let me show you the setup. Let me show you the setup here. We're gonna look at uh, a mixture, 
for the expected value. Uh, usually this is called a um, mixture distribution. Okay, but specifically we're gonna do it for uh, the expected value. So, here's the following equation we can use. Okay, the expected value of y is equal to the expected value of y given uh, x is greater than or equal to one times the probability that x is greater than or equal to one plus the expected value of y given x is equal to zero times the probability that x is equal to zero. Now, um, I want to first point out how you need to set this up if this is going to work, if this is going to be valid. Okay, first of all, why am I setting it up with the expected value of y here? Uh, one thing you need to realize is that I need the thing I'm looking for, this is the thing I'm looking for. This is what we want. We want this. <clears throat> whatever conditional expectation, um, what, sorry, whatever mixture, expectation, uh, mixture of distributions I set up here, I need to have the expression, the quantity that I want in that, in that equation. So this is part of the motivation why I'm setting it up this way. Uh, furthermore, another way to set this up so that the equation is valid is that whatever these are, this right here and this right here have to be complements. Well, think about this for a second. If you either have that x is greater than or equal to uh, 1 or x is 0, those, these right here are complements of each other. You can think about this. This is the same thing, basically, as the law of total probability. This is kind of like the law of total probability with expectation. So these absolutely have to be complements, okay? And then we just throw in the, the uh, given probabilities uh, next to it here. <clears throat> so you should be thinking this is a lot like the law of total probability. Now, um, we're looking for this. We need to find the rest. So we can't find this. Well, we, maybe you can, but it's tricky to find this. We're going to find everything else. Let's start with the easy things first. Um, I claim that this is actually easy. Why is that? Because y is binomial. If y is a binomial distribution and n is 6 and p is 0 0.1, then that tells me that the expected value of y, you know that for a binomial distribution, the expected value is always np. That's something you absolutely just have to know. So it's np, so it's 6 times 0 0.1. That's done. Uh, what is the probability uh, that x is greater than or equal to 1? Well, if you think about this for a second, um, and you should be used to this sort of trick, this can be a little bit tricky, well, computationally expensive to compute. So compute the complement. The complement of this is easy. So this is equal to 1 minus the probability that x is equal to 0. What's the probability that the number of patients um, that have early stage cancer out of 6 is 0? Well, it's binomial. x is also binomial. x is distributed binomial n equals 6, uh, p equals 0 0.2. All right, so then this is equal to 1 minus um, x equals 0, so <coughs> it looks like we have uh, 0.8, right? I mean, just use the definition of uh, the, the PMF, right? This is going to be uh, x, or sorry, 6 to 0, 0.2 to the 0, times 0.8 to the 6. So this is just 0.8 to the 6. So hopefully, hopefully you're happy with that explanation. Uh, that's what we get for probability x is greater than or equal to 1. Uh, the last thing is, um, well, the, the second to last thing, actually, the next easy thing is this thing. We just found it. This is just pointing to the 6. So this is all the easy stuff, if you ask me. No big deal. Now I want to get to, for me personally, this was what screwed me on this question, was this. How the hell do I compute this? Um, <clears throat> SOA explains this, kind of. They do, pretty much, but it's not the greatest, in my opinion. So let's compute that, okay? Um, let, let me see what I can do here. Uh, we're interested in the expected value uh, of y, given that x is equal to zero. If you've and I hope you have had to compute many conditional expectations for practice. You know that when you compute a conditional expectation, you need the conditional PMF. It's discrete, so PMF. Sorry for I keep mixing those up. I'm used to saying PDF. So this is a, 
this is a PMF. I need a conditional to compute this. Uh, we need a conditional PMF. So we need to compute. Or we need to find, we need to find, and I'll write it this way uh, to avoid annoying subscripts and like that, things like that. Probability that y equals y given x equals zero. Now a lot of times when you compute something like this, you use a definition of a conditional probability, which invo involves uh, the joint mass uh, function along with the marginal mass function. It turns out it's easier not to do that in this case. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Uh, one way to get a handle of this, and I really want to do one little example, one little um, specific example of this to see, to show you why it is the way it is. <clears throat> Let's say y is 1. So if, if uh, y is 1, what we're looking for is uh, the probability uh, that y equals 1 given x equals 0. And by the way, I'm not starting at x, uh, y, equals, uh, y equals 0. Because for expected value, for expected value, have like the sum of y times the conditional PMF. If y is zero, the whole thing zeroes out. So you're going to start at one anyway. How do I compute this uh, probability? So just think about this most more or less from uh, a counting perspective, a combinatorial perspective here. This is saying that given that no my patient, okay, given that my my six patients do not have early stage cancer what is the probability that one of them has advanced stage cancer? Well, if you think about this for a second, we already know the trials are independent. Okay, we know that already. So this tells me basically, if you think about it, that out of my six, one of them has advanced stage cancer. So in other words, I have six, I'm choosing one of them. One of these people have advanced stage cancer. The probability of advanced stage cancer, uh, given that uh, X is zero, not early, this is a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna leave that as P for now. And then whatever this is, I mean, these are the people that don't have it, right? So one minus P, this has to be to the five. I'm just gonna leave that as is. We need to find out what P is. What is P going to be here? How do I find P? How am I going to find P? Let's think about this for a second. P, remember, this, by the way, this is binomial. I mean, it should not be surprising, really. Um, so the conditional random variable is binomial. Let's think about this for a second, though. For binomial, this is the probability of success. What is a success in this case? Okay, a success for this case here is that P, my probability of success, is the probability that an individual has advanced stage cancer given that they don't have early stage cancer. It's the probability that we have, excuse me, advanced stage cancer given that they don't have early stage cancer. Use the definition of conditional probability right here. This is equal to the probability of advanced uh, and early, and, sorry, and not early, and not early advanced stage cancer, divided by the probability not early stage cancer. What is the probability that they have advanced and not early? Well, this is just saying they have advanced. What's the probability of advanced stage cancer? 0 0.1. 0 0.1. What's the probability that they don't have early stage cancer? They don't have point, well, they don't have this, so it's a complement of this, so 0 0.8, so 0 0.8. So this is the missing green, this is 1 8. And I apologize, it's very scrunched right there, but that is this P. So this P, this P right here, this P is 1 over 8. We actually answered our question. This is why I said I don't even need to compute more than one case of this. This is binomial with probability of success 1 8. So let me uh, gather my thoughts, basically. We can answer this. We can answer this right now. This piece right here, we just determined that the conditional, uh, this random variable, which is defined by a, a conditional, the conditional random variable is binomial with P 1 8. Trials are 6. Probability of success is 1 8. For any binomial distribution, the expectation is n times p is 6 times 1 8, which is equal to 3 fourths. <clears throat> so I apologize for the clutter and for sort of going all over the place, uh, but hopefully this makes sense so far. Now I'll just more or less uh, record my thoughts uh, up here. We're, again, we're, we're solving this equation, so let me get rid of this stuff. <clears throat> okay, we have all the ingredients. 
at this point it's just algebra and really I mean it's just arithmetic we're basically just equivalently solving a linear equation so it's quite easy after this I'm not go through the entire computation uh, but we'll just fill in the pieces uh, that we just found so what did we we just find here well we have the left hand side uh, the left hand side is just the unconditional expectation that an individual has advanced stage cancer so from this equation this is just unconditional uh, P, uh, NP 6 times 0 0.1 this is what we're looking for so I'll leave that uh, the expectation of y given x is greater than equal to 1 probability x is uh, greater than equal to 1 we found that that was 1 minus uh, 0 0.8 uh, to the 6 <coughs> Then next, we found this as well. Uh, we decided that this is binomial uh, with probability of success 1 8. So this is uh, 6 times 1 8. And the probability x is 0 is just 0.8 to the 6. Because we have six individuals and we want the probability that none of them uh, have early stage. So probability, a complement of this is 0.8 to the 6. Again, just basically treat this as one unknown linear. Just isolate this. So this tells me that what is I'm after that <coughs> the expected number of <coughs> out of six individuals who have advanced stage cancer, given that at least one of them has early stage cancer, is equal uh, to the following: is six times zero point one or minus six times one eighth uh, times point eight to the six divided by uh, 1 minus 0 0.8 to the 6 and this will give you approximately 0 0.547 so that's my answer quite a tricky problem in my opinion I did not get this right the first time because I screwed this up it's not obvious to me whatsoever uh, so tell me what you think comment on the video and as always uh, feel free to request a topic or example you want me to cover. Thank you for watching.